Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. My name is Pas, and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can design and animate this simple clock in Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So this is the clock I designed and I'm going to quickly recreate this for you guys. So I'm going to copy my artboard here and then get rid of everything instead of this one. This is the background color, just like a light grayish purplish color. And then I'm going to draw a circle here. All right, like that. And I'll make it, make it this color. It's the same color actually. So I'm gonna make it white for now. Go to my align tool, put it in the middle of the composition there. And what I did here was add two of these kind of shadow layers. This is white and this is a, a bit darker. So uh, to create this kind of shadowy light giving thing effect. So I'm going to duplicate this by holding option and then dr uh, dragging it over here, clicking and dragging. So I'll make a duplicate and I'm going to put uh, that behind this layer. So I'm going to press command in bracket. So now it's behind this one. So if I make this this color again, you can see that it's in front. And this one I'm going to give a blur effect to so go to effect blur Gaussian blur and I put it at 42 here by the way the size of my artboard is 1920 pixels by 1080 so uh, the blur is at 42 kind of so then we get this nice um, you know glowing effect I'm going to duplicate this and drag it over here and this one I'm going to pick this color but then I'm going to make it a bit darker like that so there we go uh, one thing to know is that if I go to a new document here and if I create this uh, shape and I make this effect blur Gaussian blur and go to 42 you can see that it has, it has these ugly bounding boxes around it so in order to get rid of those go to effect and then document raster effect settings and put your uh, options here at 36 pixels so let's put make it like 150 or something so in the clear and then if I add the effect apply Gaussian blur boom no more weird bounding box issues. So uh, that's our basis for this clock. I'm going to lock these two shadow layers here and I'm going to copy, select this one, press command C, press command F to paste it in place and scale that down a whole lot. I'm going to make that this purple color and then zoom in, press command C, command F to paste it in place again and make this a bit smaller and give this the white color, yes. Let's then make the hour and second markers uh, over here quickly. So I'm going to go to my pen tool here, and zoom in a little bit, go to the middle of the comp with my pink smart guides here. You can go to view and then uh, turn on smart guide so you get this nice help. So I'm in the middle here, so something like this, and uh, hold shift, uh, go down and click to make a perfectly straight line. Make it an outline here and give this, I'm just going to copy the uh, from here, so like that. And then I'm going to select this, go to my rotation tool here, this one, or press R on your keyboard. Then I'm going to hold Option on my keyboard or Alt on Windows, and then you can see this little thing appear next to it. And with this, I can uh, reposition this um, anchor point here. So I'm going to click on the center here. So now it will turn, rotate from this point. And then we see this rotate window pop up. And here you can set the angle. So I want this to be in here 12 times because the 12 hours of the clock. So uh, this means that I need to divide 360 degrees by 12, which comes out to 30. So then I'm going to click copy and then it copies it over here. Then I'm going to press command D a couple of times until it fills the whole circle. There you go. Then I'm going to Let's lock these ones as well and then select all of these. Press Command G to make them a group. Then I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to click on my pen tool again and make, uh, no, no, not. I'm going to go into this group, select this one, press Command C, go out of this group, press Command F, and make this a bit smaller like that. Give it the same color as this so that's white. All right, I'm going to do the same thing again here. Select it, press R to go to the rotation tool, hold Option and click on the middle of your comp here, of your uh, circle. And then I'm going to divide 360 by 60 because there are 60 minutes in one hour. So I want all of these little lines here. So that's six, then go to copy and then do the same thing here. Press Command D, you can hold Command D down and it will just make all of these copies all around, boom. And then I'm going to select all of them and then deselect with holding shift my hour markers and press command G. And then select my hour uh, markers, press command, shift, and bracket. So it puts everything on top. Or you can just go right click and then arrange, bring to front, like that. Then we're going to finish the rest of the clock. So with the pen tool, I'm going to click in the middle here and go 
up a bit and then we're going to um, copy this here and uh, this just means that it's now uh, a bit thicker and this black color uh, I'm going to put this one on top so command shift n bracket then I'm going to do this again click here and then go to there and then with my eyedropper tool click on this one so that's an eight point stroke width and then I'm going to create this second uh, hand of the clock so go over there and select this one okay and that needs to be a bit thinner so I like that so uh, now we're finished with this clock and now let's import all of this into Adobe After Effects so here we are in After Effects I'm going to make a new composition and make it 1920 by 1080 25 frames per second and let's make it one minute 30 that doesn't really matter right now let's call this clock all right, and I'm gonna go back into Illustrator and what people mostly do is of course save this as an Illustrator file with all separate layers. And what, how you can do that is go to your layer panel here, go to this little button and then go release to layers sequence and it will put all your groups and your different artwork in separate layers and you can drag them out like this and then you have all of these uh, layers with all different artwork in it. But I'm going to use something that I always use to get my artwork from Illustrator into After Effects and that is called Overlord. It's a plugin you can buy, it's right here. Are highly recommended this video is not sponsored by them I just use this a lot uh, so in this case I'm going to select this shape click on this button and then push it straight into After Effects as a shape layer without any you know needing to save it as an illustrator file or anything so I'm going to use that but as I said you can also use the traditional method of saving an AI file and then importing it here I'm going to lock this layer here and here as well I'm going to import this circle the same way you can see it because it's the same color and then I'm going to import this shape here and you can see that it does delete the blur effect so i'm going to re-add that i'm going to place it below this shape first go to effect uh, blur and sharpen and then gaussian blur yeah there you go and then drag this way up here like that i'm going to make it a little bit darker as i'm seeing now i think i like that a bit more uh, that's the wrong one whoops this one make that a bit darker like that i'm going to press command d here to duplicate it i'm going to drag it up and then make it white so i don't have to import the other shape so i'm done with that so i'm going to press command 2 in here to lock the shape that i'm done with just i like that then i'm going to select these uh two shapes i'm going to zoom in these two place them in there if you want to know how overlord works exactly i have a separate tutorial on it on this channel i will link it in the description down below and then I'm going to select these layers here, import them as well. And I'm going to put them behind this one, give them some other color. And this one as well, purple. And so I can just easy see what's what. All right, and then I need to import all the other stuff. So this one, I'm going to import that as well. I have all of these layers and let's make them like yellow and then select all of these and then import them as well it might take a while there's a lot of layers here but i'm going to group them together later so so we don't have all these layers in here so they can be uh, blue that's fine and then first i'm going to animate this uh, these two shadow layers i'm going to go to press t on my keyboard to open the opacity i'm going to zoom in here and then i'm going to click on the stopwatch and then go back here and make it zero so it kind of fades in like that it can be a bit quicker i guess yep and then i'm going to select both of them and then parent them to my uh, circle layer here of my my main uh, shape here so they're uh, stuck on it and i'm going to go to scale on this one and go to zero here and drag this layer in right click go to keyframe assistant easy ease and then go to my graph editor and I'm going to zoom in a bit and then just drag this out like this to make a nice curve so it kind of goes fast and then boom that's a bit too much let's make this take a little bit longer and I'm going to add some rotation too so I'm going to go to in my scale here or I'm going to go to this layer go to R on my keyboard rotation and then just like that turn it back here and then do the same thing as with this one add some easing to that doesn't have to be the exact same as the scale but just something like it yeah that's fine okay cool so we, now we have this uh, nice shape popping in um let's just animate these two circles popping up then i think that is these ones yeah let's go to scale and then go back a little bit 
at zero, uh, enter, and then I'm going to hold, uh, I'm going to click option and then in bracket on my keyboard to make the layer cut off right here. You can also drag them in, hold shift, make them snap, but I use option in bracket right there. Select both of them, right click keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then drag that in here as well. Yep, and then that's it can be a bit quicker. Put this one a little bit later, just a couple of frames to get some nice offset. It's too much like that. Yeah, and now it's too quick for my tape. I think I need to add adjust this. Okay, cool. And uh, let's go, let's try and put them a bit earlier here. A bit more. Nice, all right. Mm, close them up. Then I'm going to select these lines here, these clock hands, and I'm going to select this one. And with my pen behind tool, this one, I can uh, reposition the anchor point from where it should rotate. So that's right in the middle here. I can just drag that up and place it right in the middle. Or I can use a plugin that I uh, use very often as well. Uh, it's my move anchor point plugin. And I'm going to put it on the left side of this one. So it's directly, if I zoom in here, directly at this point. And the same goes for this layer, put it at the bottom. And for this layer, I want it at the top in the middle. So now I have these three points. Uh, perfect, so if I now drag them around, they drag from the middle point. So go to R on the keyboard, click on, on the stopwatch to make a keyframe. And then I'm gonna, I want them to turn in while they animate in. So I'm going to make this one, I want this to end over here though. I think that's a bit better and this over there. And then, um, just drag that out a whole lot. This one as well. And this one as well. Maybe this is too much, I don't know. We'll see. Drag this out. Right click, keyframe assistance. And then do the same thing again. Yeah, I think that's okay. Then I'm going to select one of them, this one, and then open it up. Go to add, trim paths, and then open that up. And click on the stopwatch for end, go back a little bit and then go to zero over there. And then you can see that this line is like growing, growing in. Let's just place it over here so you can see it a bit better. So now it's just going from zero to 100 real quick. And then I'm gonna place it at the front here. Give that some easy ease as well. Like that. Yep, and then put it a bit later. I'm gonna click on the trim paths here, come on C. And then I'm going to stand with my cursor, my time indicator right there, and then select both of these layers, press Command V. So it puts the um, trim paths effect on there as well. And that's horrible. Okay, select all of them, press U, then U again. And then press Shift R to close the rotation. And then I'm going to, um, let's see where we can put this. Yeah, that's better. Maybe make them earlier. Then we're going to drag this, these out a bit so we have a little bit of offset which always makes it look cooler. Yeah, I like that. And then I think everything can go a little bit faster. So press U to open all your keyframes like that. Yeah, and I'm going to drag that over here. Maybe let's, let's just play around with this so it looks good. No, it needs to be earlier. Even sooner. I'm going to cut the layers off here. So press option in bracket again. So we don't see the first part where they're like really small. So they're gonna pop in like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, cool. Then I'm going to animate these, all these lines first. You can see that these ones need to be on top of the little ones. And for this, I'm going to do the same thing here. Open this up, go to add, trim paths. Here we go. And then go to end, zero. Cut the layer off right there. Right click and go to easy ease. And I think we can do this. Only drag this in so it kind of pops into place like that. As you can see here. Kind of so pew, like that. So I'm going to select the trim paths here again. Stand on this, all of these layers. Um, cut them off, boom. Press command V. So now they all have these this trim paths effect, as you can see, they all drag in like that. And I have Rift installed here, and with Rift you can easily just rearrange these layers, because what I, I can do this manually, of course, uh, what I can do, I want to make them all just appear a little bit after each other, 
uh, because I really like it when they are offset. So you, you can do this. And then you can see that they all just come right after each other over there. But it takes way too long. And you can automatically do this while using Shift and the Arrange tool. Make it six frames in total. And then the first one and the last one are six frames apart. And everything in between just uh, is nicely uh, spaced out. So boom, there you go. I'm going to select all of them. Press Command, Shift, C or right click and go to Precompose. And then let's call these um, hours. And then for this one, I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to press Command V to paste that trim paths effect that I had uh, for these other ones here and select all of them actually. Press Command V, cut the layer off and then you can see they all come in. And for this, we're going to do the same thing here. Just click on this button to so make them rearrange all and maybe let's see if this is good enough. Now click it again, so it adds another six frames to that, and maybe again to make it turn take a little bit longer because there are a lot of these little lines in there. Yeah, let's do it like that. Then press Command Shift C again, and then let's call these seconds or no <laughs> minutes, of course, or seconds doesn't really matter. All right, both of them are done like that, and then I'm going to parent them to our main circle here, so they kind of grow in with when with the scale of this uh, shape as well. So I think, believe there was this one right there. Yeah, and they my eight. And select both of them, click on the parent link and then drag them over here. So now they are parented to this one. So if I move this thing around, they move along with it. But they also take over the scale and rotation properties of this layer. So if I drag them over here in the middle or in the middle to the front a bit more. Kind of like that. Yeah, nice. That's a nice clock animation. And then for the final touch, I'm going to animate the seconds. So this second hand should be moving every second. Um, so let's just go to number three here in three seconds. And I'm going to go to the rotation, open press R one time. Yeah, click on the stopwatch. And then for a few frames later, so let's say four frames, I'm going to add six degrees of motion, as you can see here. So just type in six here. So it's um, because 360 divided by 60 is 6. So it needs to move 6 degrees every second. Then select them both and then let's see what kind of easing is on there. That's not great. Maybe uh, let's try something here if this looks good. Yeah, that should be okay. And then over at 4 seconds, I'm going to copy the last keyframe. Press Command C, press Command V. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 frames later by holding Command and then your arrows. And then I'm going to type in here 12. And then do the same thing here. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to type in 18. And what you can also do, of course, is one, two, three, four. Just if you don't know, not good at math, just type plus six and then it does the math for you automatically. And that's a really nice way to animate this clock going seconds further in time. Thank you guys for watching. That's it for today. I hope you learned something new. Uh, if you did, please make sure to like this video or even subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And I hope to see you in the next camp keyframe. Thank you. Bye-bye.